Admirabilis, for singing this evening, is composed more in a madrigal style that would be suited for one on a part, rather than the typical, his typical mass and motet style. Our second work uh, will be, it's called Vanderliet, uh, composed by Hugo Dissler. Dissler composed many larger SATB works before composing several three-part works in the last years of his life. Dissler, Dissler worked in one of the largest churches in Germany just before and during World War II. He was forced to adapt his writing based on the singers that were available during the war, thus composing for soprano, alto, and bass. He composed several SAB works, both sacred and secular, during this time. However, he did not make his writing any easier. His music continued to be quite dissonant and rhythmically complex, even with only three parts present. Von der Liet is a great example of these compositions. The story that Dissler chooses to set is also one that would have been quite appropriate at his time. It tells of people wanting to get away from the craziness going on around them, to find a more relaxing place in the country where only the sounds of animals are around you. It speaks of leaving Herr Griesgram at home. Uh, this word is best translated into English as Mr. Grumpy. Um, now, whether Mr. Grumpy was a person, uh, whether he was the war, or whether he's COVID today, I think we all would like to leave Mr. Grumpy at home. Our third work in this set is a more contemporary work by an American composer. Ubi Caritas utilizes a very traditional and often used text that is also appropriate to the times we live in today. 
Choral directors across the world have driven up the need for three-part music over the past year to levels unheard of in previous years. This, of course, is due to the pandemic. And composers have had to answer that need with works such as Ubi Caritas. Yay, yeah, they're here. I want to take a moment while these students are back behind me on stage uh, don't, just to say how proud I am of them. Uh, I tell them this often in class, and they'll tell you like daily the last few months I've been saying this. But I want each of you to know too. This has been a hard year uh, for all of us, but for those of us who make music, it's been a very hard year. Music ensembles have always been about 50% music making and 50% collaboration. COVID has taken away much of the collaborative part of music ensembles by creating social distancing and hiding your face behind a mask. Both of these combined make hearing each other while you sing nearly impossible. These students have worked hard to overcome this and have come in each day to rehearsal with a positive attitude and a desire to learn. So before we start, I wanna give these students behind me a round of applause just for being them. Oh. 
He made a copy of one is by one of my absolute favorite composers, Pablo Monteverdi. This work was written just after his success in his opera Orfeo, and just before he took uh, the job as music director at St. Mark Basilica in Venice. At this time, Monteverdi was out of Orfeo, and in the middle of controversy surrounding his style of composition, many of the established church leadership thought Monteverdi's use of setting melodies to chords was too progressive and wanted to maintain the traditional style of counterpoint mastered by our earlier composer, Capistrina. It was with this work we're performing today the Monteverdi's brother used as an example in an editorial to prove that the new style better connected with the text. This new style is later perfected by Bach and Handel, and it's the primary style of composition is still used today. This work is set with the Ritornello, or Return, or the Civil Play of the Ritornello Twice, or the Fire Saint, the first verse. The work will then all make between the Ritornello, Solos, and the Twilight.
So Handel was forced to compose for smaller forces than he traditionally utilized. Handel combines the alto and tenor parts into one part and leaves out the viola part altogether. For this anthem, Handel chose his text from Psalm 42. This is a particular poignant passage for today as it speaks of the desire for something more, but maintaining hope that life will improve in some way, whether this is the sanctuary eventually being completed finding God's plan, or the end of a pandemic. We are so lucky this evening to have this wonderful orchestra full of amazing musicians. We're also fortunate to have our voice faculty, Tammy Campbell and Jeremy Bates, joining us for this concert. Uh, I and the College Choir are also so grateful for the community members that joined us to allow us to perform these larger works with orchestra this evening. We are so lucky to live in a community of musicians that both love to perform and are willing to be a part of the East Central College Music Department. This is a seven movement work. Please hold your applause until the entire work is completed.
I want to start off again by thanking Sylvia, Chad, and Andrew once again for their help setting up sound and video for our live stream and recording this evening. I also want to thank again each musician on stage tonight. I am extremely fortunate to work with so many talented and inspiring musicians. Finally, I want to thank each of you in attendance and those of you watching at home and those of you who watch the recording later. It is so special to be able to perform in front of an audience this evening. Our final work tonight is Give Me Oil in My Lamp. This arrangement combines two well-known spiritual tunes, Give Me Oil in My Lamp and Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. And the, work, the work wraps up our theme of beauty through adversity by providing the theme that we will keep on going. Throughout all diversity, music will still be present and singing will be a catalyst for our hope.